aimed shortly. End quote. All right. Changes could be coming to some of your favorite apps and websites. The Department of Justice announced this week that it's opening an antitrust review of big tech companies investigating major search engines, retail services and social media platforms to see if they are so big that they hurt consumers. No company names were mentioned specifically, but Facebook, Google, Amazon, Apple expected to face this scrutiny. Joining us now, MSNBC contributor and former U.S. attorney Joyce Vance. You know, Joyce, some uh, who, who have watched stuff like this in the past might go, oh, I remember, you know, what AT&T, Ma Bell was before, and they had gone through this before. But let's jump back to exactly what today's case is here. What stands out to you? Will this be effective based on what the criticisms are of big tech? You know, antitrust, antitrust investigations tend to be long, slow-moving sorts of animals, but they do perform an important function protecting consumers in cases where some, some of the market giants here have gotten so large, and they'll look into whether they stifle innovation, innovation or, or have other negative impacts on consumers' experience. So this can be a good, if rather painful, process when it's properly done. Katie Benner uh, from the New York Times, Justice Department reporter, uh, who's held many different hats in her journalism career, one of which she knows this very space tech quite well. That was one of uh, her old beats. Uh, what's happening here, Katie? So I think that for a long time, the tech companies were able to make the argument that as long as there was no consumer harm, and in fact, they were providing a consumer benefit by providing many, many free services, there was no reason to launch an antitrust investigation. You know, traditionally, antitrust investigations have been, uh, have been launched because companies were creating consumer harm by raising prices, by having a monopoly on prices, whereas here, the tech companies were saying, all we're doing is providing free services that help people. But I think when we take a step back and we look at what the Justice Department is seeing now, they are seeing companies that, as Joyce said, possibly have stifled innovation. Companies like Facebook that have bought all of their competitors in order to make sure that nobody can encroach upon their territory. And companies like Google that control a really important commodity, which is consumer data, mm. which is something that we have not ever really thought of as something of value, but we now see because of things like Google's earnings and because of things like the way that tech companies have become so powerful, because of the outcome of the election, the way that data was used to manipulate voters, that data has become an extremely valuable commodity, not unlike people have compared it to oil. So when you only have a few companies controlling that, suddenly it becomes more important to take an antitrust, to look at those companies through an antitrust lens. Amazon, their spokeswoman said this, quote, we do not sell our customers data and we don't share a customer's personal information with third parties for marketing purposes without the customer's consent. Joyce, quickly here, what are the responses that might work in court for these tech companies? You know, like virtually every other area of the law, the rapid development of the Internet and, and these big companies has challenged the, the extent of the law. The, the structure that exists in our laws just isn't ready to deal with it. So the companies will have to plow fresh ground here. And in many ways, this is a good development. The, the legal system needs to expand to fully contemplate the issues raised by Internet. So this, this may, at the end, mm. be positive for everyone. Katie Benner, Tech would say, we're, we're self police we're good we know what we're doing right now um, are they do, do they have some appetite will they accept some sort of overseeing Sure. I mean, I think that all industries would like to say that they self-police. We certainly saw this with the financial services industry before the financial crisis and after the financial crisis. I think that now for the tech industry, you could say the 2016 election was their financial crisis. People suddenly stopped seeing them as benevolent large companies mm -hmm. and started trying to examine the role that they played in everyday life. And I think that, of course, all industries want to self-police. At the end of the day, we often see that it takes a combination of willingness within industry to change and also outside pressure from regulators to enforce that change. Katie Benner and Joyce Vance, thank you on a breaking news Sunday for being so patient throughout this hour and sticking around for this important topic. We appreciate both of you and we'll be right back.